everyone and welcome back to the breakdown today i'm going to be teaching you how to make a minecraft server in minecraft 1.18 uh unfortunately it says 1.17 here but that's not correct the video you're watching now will be right here when you get to this page later in the video now first things first this is not a 24-hour server it's not a server that's up all the time it's only up and running when your computer's up and running on top of that it's only meant for your friends your family people that you trust and honestly that you would invite over to your house last but not least it does use your own computer's resources and because of that you need a decent computer to be able to run a minecraft server and play minecraft at the same time because it's both going to be using your computer's resources minecraft 1.18 from what i've seen is awesome and a little worse performing than other minecrafts in the past right 1.17 for example so keep that in mind as well now what if though you want a public server or you want a private server but you don't want to have to worry about hosting it on your own hardware you don't want to have to worry about port forwarding you don't want to have much of the stress of running a minecraft server you kind of just want to play Minecraft and have most of the hard stuff taken care of for you. Well, in that case, that's where Apex Minecraft hosting comes in. Go to the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to start your very own 24-hour DDoS-protected Minecraft server. That's a server that's going to be up all the time that can be private for just your friends and family or can be public. It can go either way on Apex. And guess what? Like I said, it's not on your own computer, so it's using Apex's hardware, and they strive to have lag-free hardware. We actually love and trust them so much that we host our own server, played our breakdowncraft.com on them, and I can confirm it is a lag-free hardware. Absolutely incredible. So check out Apex in the first link down below the breakdown.xyz to get a Minecraft server started in the quickest, simplest, and easiest way possible. However, if you don't want to purchase a server through Apex Minecraft hosting, instead you want to host one on your own computer, well, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in this video. So let's not waste any time. Let's just jump right on into it. First things first, you want to go to the second link down below, and that's going to take you here. This is our text tutorial. Like I said, the video you're watching now will be right up here at the top, but this is our text tutorial for how to make a Minecraft 1.18 server. It goes through everything in depth. But the thing you want when you're here on this page is to click on this green download Minecraft button, right? When you click on that download Minecraft button, it's going to open up this. This is the official Minecraft.net website where we can download the Minecraft server jar. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the download Minecraft underscore server 1.18 jar link right there. That little green link, hover over it, click on it, and the download of the server jar will begin. In the bottom left, you will have on Google Chrome a file that's trying to download called server.jar. You are safe to keep that file. Almost a Firefox, it will open in the center of your screen. Just keep in mind, this is from Minecraft.net. It's 100% safe, I promise. Now we can go ahead and minimize our browser. The next step is then to create a folder on your desktop. So to do that, go ahead and right click on your desktop, create a new folder. You can name this whatever you want. I'm gonna name it play.breakdowncraft.com because that's our own incredible Minecraft survival server. It's also got Skyblock on there. And if you want an amazing place for your friends to play and you don't wanna host your own server, check out a Breakdown Craft. It's absolutely incredible. Set up for friends, all that stuff. Once you've got your folder created here, you can name it something other than Breakdown Craft, by the way, that's fine. Uh, once you've got your folder set up here though, we wanna go ahead and hit the little Windows icons in the top left of my screen, probably in the bottom left of your screen. But click on that little Windows icon on the top bottom left of your screen and you want to type in downloads as you can see we have this downloads file folder here click on that and in here we have this server.jar go ahead and drag that to your desktop when it's on your desktop drag and drop it into the folder you created finally we want to go ahead and open up this folder and we want to open up this server.jar to do that just double click on it well that is assuming it has this little java logo here if it doesn't you can try this right click click on open with and then click Java and click OK. Now, for me, it's gonna go ahead and work. I know it's gonna work for me. However, for you, it might not. And if it doesn't, that's because you need to download Java and run the jar fix. So one thing I will say there is, by the way, it didn't work for me, right? However, if I double click on it, it will work. So sometimes the open with Java can actually have some issues on the server.jar. That's why double clicking on it is the best. But if you can't double click on it because you have a zip file, like it looks like a zip file, it's trying to open with WinRAR, it's trying to do anything like that, here's what you need to do. You need to go to the description down below and download and install Java. On top of that, if you have been able to run a Minecraft server in the past, and for some reason, it's giving you an error when you try to open up the Minecraft server.jar. You need Java. Java 17 is now required for Minecraft. So if you come here, this is our website. This tutorial up here will update very, very soon. But the text tutorial is up to date. And when you click on this, it takes you here to download Java 17. Once you're here, you want to click on Windows. And then you want to make sure you download this installer. From there, you just install it like any other program. Just click this link right here. It will download. And it installs like any other program. 
Once you've done that, you can go ahead and double click on that server.jar and it will generate these files. So as you can see here, we can now double click on the eula.txt file because we need to agree to the Minecraft eula to start our server. Assuming you do go to this link and agree to the eula, come back here and change eula equals false to eula equals true, T-R-U-E, exactly like that. Then do file, save, right like so, and close out of the eula.txt file. Now, if we double click on the server.jar, because we went and downloaded installed Java, it will then go ahead and open this up. Except if it doesn't, right? And the reason you still may have issues is because you need to run the jar fix, which is also in the description down below. And this is a super simple program. It's just taking the jar files on your computer and linking them back to Java. Like if you tried to double click on the server.jar and it's trying to open up with WinRAR or something like that. Now, on our screen right here, we have a thing that's basically saying Windows Defender is trying to get Minecraft, you know, to the public network. You want to make sure both private and public networks are fixed here, because if you don't, you may have issues later on with your friends not being able to join. If you do have issues later on, there's a link in the description down below to how to do this after the fact. It's our Windows Defender tutorial. But for now, if you have this, awesome. Make sure private and public is checked and then click allow access. Then your server will be started, as you can see right here in the background. Now, keep in mind here, you may need to run the jar fix in order to get this to work. So go here, run the jar fix, simple three-step process. And then finally, you'll be able to double click on the server.jar, get the eoa.txt, change this EULA equals false to EULA equals true, assuming you agree to the EULA, and then double click on the server.jar again to generate the rest of these files and get your server console. Now, that was a lot, but guess what? Your server's now set up, right? Your server is now running and you can join it. At this point, I'd actually recommend you to join your server because it's a good way to just make sure everything's working and up and running. Then we're going to show you how to allow your friends to join your server. So I'm going to go ahead and do a very quick jump cut and open up Minecraft 1.18. I'll meet you once I'm in game. So Minecraft 1.18 is open and the server, as you can see, is still up and running. Now, how we're about to join your server, you're the only person that can join your server this way, but it is a way that you will always join your server. Honestly, you should always join your server using localhost, using your own local IP address, not your public IP. You can test your public IP, but overall, you should always join via your local host. However, your friends will always join via your public IP address, and we'll show you that a little later in the video. Let's go ahead, though, click on multiplayer, direct connection, and like I said, your IP address, how you're joining your server, is simply by typing local host, exactly like this, in the server address. Click join server, and when you do this, it's going to log you on into the server on the left-hand side, as you can see. So here we are. We are in-game. We are on this server, and, uh, you know, we can do things like op ourselves and all that, but overall, we are on this server and we are online. The reason I'm running over here, by the way, is so when we come back, you'll be able to see this area is where we are when we join later in this video via our public IP. The reason we joined this way is I just wanted to kind of show you your server is up and running. Now, let's go ahead, quit out of Minecraft, and go ahead and stop our server. Always stop your server by clicking right here in this text box and typing stop and then hitting enter. That's going to properly shut your server down and that way you don't have anything like random jar files or jar programs running lagging your computer. That stops it properly. Now we can go ahead, kind of move our server to the side. It's time to go ahead and port forward so your friends can join. At this point, I do want to mention port forwarding is the most difficult part of this process and is going to be different for kind of everyone watching this video because we all end up having different routers. We have tried our best to create guides on all all the different routers out there, but I'm sure we've missed some, so keep that in mind. However, one last thing that I do want to mention is that Apex it doesn't require port forwarding at all, so be sure to check out that link in the breakdown.xyz slash Apex if you want to get a server up and running without port forwarding. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and get this going. First thing you want to do is go ahead and click the little Windows icon again, top left of my screen, probably in the bottom left of your screen, and then type in CMD. We then want to open up the command prompt right here, and in the command prompt, what you want to do is type IP C-O-N-F-I-G, right like so, IP config, and then once we've typed in that, go ahead and hit enter. It's going to give us a bunch of information here, but we only need two numbers. We're going to go ahead and open up Notepad, and the two numbers that we need are our IPv4 address and our default gateway. So for me, I need IPv4, and that's going to be 192.168.1.67. Yours is probably completely different, and that's A-OK. -okay. No worries there. That's why we're doing it this way, getting it via the IP config instead of saying this is the number because yours is probably completely different. Then we want to go ahead and get our default gateway. So default gateway, right like so. That is probably going to be different for you as well, but for me, right here it is. It's this last line for me. It's going to be 192.168.1.1. Now, 
Here's the thing, you may have two default gateways. One that's got a bunch of numbers and letters and is kind of complicated, and then one that is just numbers. You wanna get the one that's just numbers, like mine is here, 192.168.1.1. Again, your numbers may be different, but it shouldn't have any letters in it. It should just have numbers. Now we can go ahead and close out of the command prompt. We don't need that anymore, but we wanna open up our browser and go to a brand new tab. Then up here at the top, we wanna to type in 192.168.1.1, right? 192.168.1.1 and hit enter. It's then gonna open up a login box of some sort, but yours is probably gonna be completely different from mine. Mine, as you can see, just kind of pops in from the top. Yours may be in a nice, pretty GUI style setup. Yours may be in the center of your screen. Yours may be in a GUI, but kind of an ugly one. It just depends, but you're gonna have some sort of a login box here. What you wanna enter in here is your router's username and password. Luckily, in the description down below, we have an in-depth guide on how to find your router's username and password. It goes through all of these different methods here. Most people find it by method number three, but everyone finds it by method number five, where you can then, you know, get your router's password, come back over here and log in. So I'm gonna go ahead, enter in my router's username and password, and I will meet you once I've done that and we've logged in. There we go, I've entered the password, and when I click sign in, it's going to log us in right like so. And yeah, most likely your router is gonna look completely different from my router here, completely different. And guess what? That's perfectly fine. We're still gonna try our best to walk you through this in a few ways. One, I'm gonna give you all the common terms that port forwarding can be labeled under under your router. On top of that, in the description down below, we have a guide on port forwarding that's going to show you how to port forward on all the top routers today. This video right here shows you how to port forward on Netgear routers, on Linksys routers, on Asus routers, on Verizon, AT&T, TP-Link, all sorts of different routers. It shows you how to port forward on them. So this video right here is a great resource on port forwarding and it's something honestly everyone should watch. Even if your router isn't mentioned in that video, a lot of routers call things very similar things and have very similar software. So it's probably worth looking through and watching this even if your specific router isn't mentioned. However, on my Netgear Orbi router, what we wanna do is go to advanced. Then from advanced, we wanna go into advanced again. Then we want to go to port forwarding slash port triggering. Now for you, it may be in advanced like it is for me, and then it may be in administration. It may be in advanced and advanced again like it is for me, but instead of calling port forwarding slash port triggering, it may be called apps and gaming. For you, it may not be in an advanced tab. It may just be called apps and gaming. It could be called your networking tab or in your networking tab. It could be in your security tab. It could be in single port forwarding. It could also be called multi-port forwarding or like, you know, port forwarding in general. It could be called NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It could also be called NAT gaming, NAT gaming. Overall though, usually it's called port forwarding slash port triggering, apps and gaming, or NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. As far as sub tabs, it's usually going to be an advanced tab, an administration tab, or a security tab. That's kind of what you need to look for there, and that's kind of the basics. And again, we do have a link to our website in the description down below that goes through some of the most popular routers. Nevertheless, when we click on port forwarding here, it takes us to this. Now, as you can see, I already have this port here. Let me go ahead and delete that because, uh, well, we're about to do that again. So once you have gotten to port forwarding, it's going to be one of two things. You're going to either have to do what I have to do, which is like add a service or add a port forwarding, or you're going to have a big list. If you have a big list, just start with the first one on the list, right? That's fine. Otherwise, click add port forward or set a port forward up, whatever it is for you. Uh, you know, create a new port forward. Once you click that, it's going to go ahead and kind of like load some sort of a menu. Similar to this, yours may be a line though, instead of like a list like this, but it's going to be similar. Now for service name or ID, it's going to be simply Minecraft, right? Because that's basically identifying what this is for. Now for your protocol, that's going to be TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or selecting both, right? you need to make sure both of these are selected. Now, for whatever reason you can't select both, do this twice. Do this once for TCP and once for UDP, leaving everything else the same. However, I can, and most routers do, have the ability to select both in some way, and that's what we're doing here. Now, for anything involving the word port, you're going to enter in 25565. So, external port, port 1, port 2, outside port, inside port, first port, second port, anything involving the word port, you're going to enter in 25565. Now, for us, as you can see, we have external port 25565, internal port, it auto-populated, but 25565 as well for the internal port. Then for our internal IP address, this is gonna be your IPv4 address that we found earlier. So 192.168.1 and then .67. Now on some routers, you'll only have a list like this. And if that's the case, you just wanna find the device you're setting up your server on and select that, right? So for me, if we kind of go through this list here, we should be able to find .67 
I gotta, I gotta find it. Hold on. Well, my router's playing tricks on me, and for some reason the device isn't here, but I promise that is correct. So what we want to do is once we've got that entered in here, and that's why you a lot of times can enter in your own IP, but you want to enter in your IPv4 address there or select your device from the list, whichever you need to do. By the way, if your device isn't on your router, most likely restarting your router or disconnecting from the internet and reconnecting will fix that. Now, let's just go ahead and click apply there. It's then gonna set this port forward up and we're gonna go. Port forwarding is done. The hard part is finished. Now, in some cases, when you're port forwarding, you will sometimes need an external or outside IP in addition to the local IPv4 address. In that case, Perfect, because you need that no matter what. Everyone watching this video who wants their friends to be able to join their server needs their external or public IP address. And you can find that in the description down below at What's My IP Address. This is our website where we just say, hey, here's your IP address. Take that and give it back to you, basically. And what you want to do is go ahead and go to this website and copy it. And as you can see, 103 is at the end here. That's going to be the same right here and later in Minecraft. The rest of this is blocked out, as well as your city, region, all of that stuff, even latitude and longitude coordinates. This this is the information someone can get with your public IP address, and that's why this is only meant for your friends, your family, people that you trust to join your server, not meant for everyone. So we're going to go ahead and copy our public IP address here, and now I'm going to go ahead, minimize our browser, right like so, and we can go ahead and open up Minecraft. Before we start our server, though, there's one more thing we need to do. So go ahead and open up your server right like so, and then you want to go ahead and open up the server.properties. Now, you might need to select to open this with Notepad, right? So you want to make sure you're open these up with notepad and then you want to find the server dash IP equals right here. Then next to server dash IP equals you want to enter in your IPv4 address that we found earlier. In my case 192.168.1.67 but yours is probably completely different but enter that right next to server dash IP equals then do file save on the server properties. Now we can go ahead start the server.jar and launch up Minecraft so we can join the server via our public IP and be good to go. So here we are our server is live and Minecraft 1.18 is open. We can now click on multiplayer, direct connection, or you can add this server, it's up to you, but direct connection, and we wanna go ahead and paste in our public IP address. Now again, all you can see at the end is 103. You can't see the rest of it because, well, you don't wanna give this out to anybody and everybody. The rest of it is just kind of disappeared. It's blacked out, we have blurred it basically. So we have 103 there, then you wanna go ahead and click join server. Your friends are gonna join your server in this exact same way, using your public IP address, right? That's what they're going to do. Now, one thing I also want to mention is over here, it's showed our public IP as well. And we have whited that out, blacked that out as well, because we don't want you to be able to see the public IP address. But nevertheless, here we are. We're in the server at the exact same spot that we were at before. Everything is looking good. From here, you can come over here and you can opt yourself by typing op and then your username, things like that. Hit enter and it will op you. You'll be able to go into creative, all of that stuff. Your friends can join via your public IP address. So you'll just send them the public IP address that we just found on what's my IP and you'll be able to basically use that and join and all that stuff to join and play on your Minecraft server. Now, for whatever reason they can't, it's probably because of Windows Defender, which I briefly mentioned earlier. We do have an in-depth guide on fixing Windows Defender in the description down below. It could also be a firewall on your router, and some routers do have firewalls that will block port forwards, so keep that in mind, and you may need to go ahead and change your firewall settings on your router. Last, but definitely not least, it could be something else along with your port forward or your server in general. And we do have an in-depth guide in the description down below on how to fix broken Minecraft servers, right? It goes in-depth on how to fix broken Minecraft servers, every single step of it. And uh, yeah, it's like a 30 minute video and goes through all the different ways that your Minecraft server could be broken. That is a good resource if you do have issues with your server now or in the future. Nevertheless, thank you all so, so much for watching. Come play with us on our Minecraft server, play.breakdowncraft.com. And remember the easiest way to start a Minecraft server is with Apex Minecraft hosting, first link down below. My name is Nick. This is been the breakdown. If we helped you out, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe, and I am out. Peace.